After the destruction of the oil depot in Feodosia, the Russian forces have faced logistical chaos. They have a fuel shortage, according to the Telegram channel of the partisan movement Atesh. Agents are recording active movements of military fuel trucks across Crimea. The destruction of the oil depot in the Feodosia has led to a serious fuel shortage for the Russian armed forces, the message states. According to the partisans, the Russian forces are massively creating mobile refueling stations which constantly change locations out of fear of being struck. The higher command ordered that fuel shortage points should not stay in one place for more than 10 to 12 hours. This situation shows that the destruction of such large-scale facilities critically affects both the supply of troops and the ability of the Russian armed forces to carry out combat missions. Atesh notes, on October the 7th, a massive fire broke out on the oil terminal in Feodosia. The authorities declared a state of emergency. The general staff of the Ukrainian armed forces confirmed the strike on the marine oil terminal in Feodosia. On October the 10th, it was reported that another tank of the Feodosia oil depot, which was attacked by Ukrainian forces, had caught fire. A jet fire at a major oil terminal in the port city of Feodosia in Russian annexed Crimea has been put out five days after Ukrainian missile strikes there, its Russian installed mayor Igor Kachenko said. There's no jet fire on the territory of the oil terminal. Kachenko wrote on Telegram saying the situation has stabilized and is fully under control. Emergency services and our municipal enterprises are continuing emergency recovery work. It will continue until complete liquidation. Kachenko added, media reports linked the oil terminal to President Vladimir Putin's university friend Viktor Kamarin, who was said to be the beneficiary of a company that bought it in 2019 after its nationalization by Russia's occupational authorities. The Feodosia terminal is the largest in Crimea by the volume of its oil products transshipped which have been used to supply the needs of the Russian occupying army. The strike was executed by missile forces of the Ukrainian armed forces in cooperation with other components of Ukraine's defense forces. Measures to undermine the military economic potential of the Russian Federation are ongoing. The general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine states. Russia's losses in Ukraine during offensives on the Eastern Front have exceeded 600,000 personnel killed and wounded, the Pentagon said on condition of anonymity during a briefing for journalists' political reports. It is noted that the estimate of the casualties more than 40 times Russia's losses during its decade-long invasion of Afghanistan in the 1990s is in line with previous Ukrainian estimates but tells only part of the story. The publication emphasized that over the past few months, Russian troops have captured several key cities that the Ukrainians stubbornly held. Politico says that the Russian offensives since the summer have consisted of massive artillery attacks, followed by large troop movements rushing headlong toward well-entrenched Ukrainian positions, resulting in thousands of casualties as Moscow's commanders seem to have decided on a strategy of trading bodies for ground. Russian gains have been the most sustained and significant since its initial invasion in February 2022, and Moscow appears to be betting that casualties are sustainable, at least in the short term. They have attempted to overcome Ukrainian fires with massive maneuver, a military official said. If you look at the salient around Pokrovsk, the number of Russian forces there is astounding. It's tens of thousands of forces that they've put into that very small area. As you know, when you have that many forces in a very small area, it's a target-rich environment. For the Ukrainians, the Ukrainian government has rushed troops to fill gaps in their front lines but have continued to fall back since the summer, unable to fully counter the Russian assaults. Russian troops are now approaching the city of Pokrovsk in the Donetsk region of Donbass, the fall of which would be a serious blow to Ukrainian forces. Politico added, Russia sent a staggering number of troops to Pokrovsk, a relatively small area, according to one military official, confirming its bloody strategy. President Volodymyr Zelensky has been shopping his plan for victory to leaders in Washington and Europe, but has managed to generate little enthusiasm for its key tenets, more weapons and the lifting of restrictions by the US, UK and Germany to allow their long-range weapons to be used deep inside Russia, where Kyiv sees fit. Russian forces have exhausted many of the reserves they built up 
for their intensified offensive operation in the summer of 2024. The Institute for the Study of War ISW estimates that the ongoing Russian offensive operation is likely to conclude in the coming months, according to the ISW. The Russian military command is likely focused on increasing mechanized offensive activity to allow Russian troops to advance across open fields and secure positions in nearby settlements along the front line, which can then be used as a launching pad for preparing and initiating offensive operations aimed at achieving operational goals such as capturing Kurakov in the western Donetsk region or taking Pokrovsk. Autumn weather conditions are also likely to restrict the maneuverability of Russian infantry. The autumn weather will cause many windbreaks, consisting of deciduous trees to lose most of their leaves, providing less concealment for Russian infantry groups during the fall of 2024 and winter of 2024 to 2025, making Russian soldiers more vulnerable to reconnaissance and tactical fire from Ukrainian drones. Russian forces are unlikely to halt their offensive operations after the autumn season of muddy conditions, although adverse weather is expected to diminish the effectiveness of Russian infantry. Russian President Vladimir Putin and the military command are pursuing a strategy aimed at preventing Ukraine from accumulating manpower and material resources to counter the initiative across the entire theater of operations by maintaining constant offensive pressure on Ukrainian troops along the front line. They are likely to continue adhering to this strategy despite seasonal limitations on the maneuverability of mechanized and infantry units. According to the ISW report from October the 9th, Russian forces advanced in Vovchansk, Kharkiv region, along the kupiansk svatov kremina line in the Siversk area and southern Turetsk. Ukrainian forces made gains during a counter-attack east of Pokrovsk, while Russian forces advanced southeast of Pokrovsk.